Now let's look at some examples of exciting new technology. One is the emergence of a dual mobility hip replacement. This involves the articulation of a highly cross-linked polyethylene ball inside a metal shell in the acetabulum designed to permit rotation of the plastic both against the inner surface of the metal in the pelvis and the ball of the femoral device. Furthermore, the metal shell itself has been designed with anatomic contours which allow positioning that eliminates the protrusion of metal that can interfere with the function of tendons in the hip at certain points of the human pelvis where the anatomy is not circular in design and will result in a more reliable pain-free function, especially with hip flexion. This type of technology confers extraordinary stability to the hip and permits greater range of motion without dislocation. Another advance has been in the knee surgery, the use of a mobile bearing plastic device in a partial knee replacement that reduces the translational wear that used to occur between the metal of the femoral device and the surface of the plastic. Now the plastic can move independently against both surfaces and provide marked reduction in wear over time as this device glides freely against two very shiny cobalt chrome metal surfaces. Total knee devices are now manufactured with exacting tolerances to anatomic design. And the machining of the surfaces can be done either with a computer or robot or manually with much improved instrumentation that permits the insertion of the device in, with various sizes available to the surgeon that replicates the anatomy patient by patient and permits much better range of motion and protection from interference with soft tissues. One of the important developments has been the validation of the role of double tapered titanium stems. These stems are inserted directly into the human femurs without the need for acrylic cement and that eliminates a source of wear that was a problem in the early years of total hip replacement as the acrylic cement is subject to cracking, fragmentation, and damage to surrounding bone. With refinements in design that includes removal of some of the bulk of the prosthesis at the upper end that permits the insertion of the device with less and less damage to the host bone. Here is another advance, the use of the metal oxinium, which is a transition metal, which has a surface that is ceramic in nature, but an inner core that is metallic. And this eliminates the risk of fracture that is associated with ceramic balls. And we can see here an example of the polyethylene material that is highly cross-linked. This polyethylene is subject to ionizing radiation in inert gas environment and results in the virtual elimination of wear at the surface. This allows larger ball diameters to be utilized, which are inherently more stable without incurring the risk of increased wear. This will have a huge impact in the future in reducing the risk of revision surgery and reducing the cost of total hip replacements as we are pr approaching an era where a lifetime result can be expected in some circumstances from these hip replacement and knee replacement procedures.